It's going to be a good one, Seymour. It's great to be on the desk with you. And I mean, hello, ladies and gentlemen, but I think most specifically, it's hello to the ladies tonight. Oh, National yeah. National Women's Day. Can't forget about it. And, you know, I, I thought maybe we could take a quick moment at the start here before we get into the Call of Duty talk to just share some appreciation for all the women in our lives. And I think for me, it's the it's the cliche one. It's my mom who did a lot for me. So, mom, you might actually be watching. If you're watching, I love you so much. Thank you for everything. So. Happy National Women's Day. I don't know if you had somebody you wanted to shout out there. I always have to shout out my mom. You know, my mom, my grandma, you know, two of them always been in my life. But especially these days, you know, my girlfriend always supporting me, always being there for me, definitely brightening up my day. So a big shout out to all the women, you know, in the world, the esports, you know, who run the world. Beyonce said it. Who run the world? Girls. And that is the facts. That, that is just straight facts. But right now, you know, CCL. We got two teams coming into it as we go back into this matchup. Why don't we run through the maps we have? Because we have a lot of tanks up ahead of us. If you guys like Garrison, then stay tuned for this matchup because there's a heck of a lot of it here. We are starting off, though, not on Garrison. Raid Hardpoint is going to be map number one. And the next three maps through Search, through Control, and through Hardpoint number two, it is going to be straight Garrison. But if it goes that map five, we are going to finish off on Miami. Yeah, and I mentioned that when we were kind of just chatting. I think Miami is a great way to end any series. Really can just be that climax that you're looking for. There's a lot of versatility. And then I think the same thing for this starting map with Raid. Sure, maybe people have have their qualms with Garrison, and I can totally understand that. Uh, less of a versatile map, but I think Raid kind of gives you a little bit of everything. You have to have the gun skill. You have to have your rotations. You have to have your communication. Like, it all has to be there if you want to come out with a win on Raid. You got to know your timings, like practice has to be in place. So much that can happen on this map. I think it's the one that most teams have a lot of experience with. So you kind of get the best from both teams. And I really look forward to it as a starting map. Anytime it's raid, I'm going to be excited. Well, starting off for this matchup between the two teams as well, you look at the University of South Dakota on paper looking like the better squad. I mean, there's six and three in the CCL after split number one. You look at Northwest Missouri, they're four and five. So on paper, just the record shows that University of South Dakota, they just they've had the better track. Now, we did take a look at their losses and they did go up some pretty uh, up against some pretty notable teams and their losses. They they're pretty justified. I mean, they had some pretty, pretty tough teams to play against. So both of them, you know. You know, I expect this one to be close at it. They've had some good wins. They've had some good losses. But right now, it's just the two of them. And you look at their raid matchups for the start this off. University of South Dakota is 4-1 and one on raid hardpoint, whereas Northwest Missouri State is 2-2. Two and two. So University of South Dakota have a lot more experience and a lot more success on this map. Absolutely. The statistics are definitely going to speak pretty loudly for this one. And even just hard point in general, NWMS four and seven in the mode. So you have to be leaning towards USD in this matchup, but I love an underdog, right? I always want to see oh, yeah. a team come from behind. So maybe it'll be the search and destroys for the Bearcats, but either way, taking it to the hidden Hills of Los Angeles here up to raid for the starting of this series. Again, I really think this has just got to be the best map in anybody's eyes. If you don't like raid, there's something wrong with you. I hate to say it, but it's the facts. It's just such a classic. You know, what, seven years and running. Nobody hates this map. Uh, that I know of, at least. Is we're going to be hopping on with University of South Dakota getting point three spawns. They're looking to break it early. Point number one. Hopefully going to be hotly contested from both sides. That is quite the bloodbath spark on your screen. Looking to break through kitchens, but shut down by the bullfrog of Boosty right away. As University of South Dakota, they're gaining time. And the spawns actually are flipping a big one-on-one -on -one off screen in the back of the map. Able to put a couple more bodies on the hill and win these trades off the rip. 13 seconds already going their way, and Franchise is going to make it two. That should continue the ticks on that first hill. You see the rotations, though, for the Bearcats. Already starting to think about pushing through mid rather than hitting through this old hill. Hoyless is going to try it for a little while here. Put some shots down. One player does fall. The second is Ruski. Can he pick up this kill on a Hoyless? He oh. does. So that time will go in favor of the Coyotes. You're looking at the rotation now. Disarray has his foot on for about 10 seconds until it props open. So plenty of time for University of to come in and wipe them. And you got a ton of time on point one. You have to be feeling good. Sparky's on the point. Does get traded out. Still fighting with the better spawns here. As I do say that, look at the minimap. The Bearcats, they spawn in basketball. And University of South Dakota in a very dangerous situation. You got Boosie here, one of my favorite players in the CCL to watch for this reason and this reason only. Using the Bullfrog, 50 rounds in that mag. Go ahead and let it unleash as he finds one at open steps. 
He's going to be sought out by this enemy team. They're all looking to pick up that kill. Hoyless in a big spot up the backside is going to fall to the nade. So now all of a sudden, this hard point wide open here, and the Coyotes are in for the break. One more player to deal with. It's Cushy, who's doing his best. He finds two. The third oh. is not going to happen. Drewski's able to clean it up. And this final 20 seconds should be good for the Coyotes. A good break, but now you're looking at point number three, Bert, as the initial rotation off that white. Bearcats are going to have point number three. They're going to be looking to push the lanes as well. Cushy doing a good job at holding down these spawns, making sure that on the rotation, University of South Dakota have to make a big trek just to get back to it. You look at Sparky does get one, but once again, cleaned up. Cushy here to stay alive. Some big gunfights coming out of our... Cushy right now is doing it all for the Bearcats. A lot of finesse. He is going to fall because he's on low health. Disarray. You shouldn't be winning that gunfight, but he's got a couple players on the enemy team here ready to trade him out. So now the Coyotes are trying to extend this lead a little more here. They're up to 40 points, and it's just going to be a team push from the Bearcats. As Hoyless waits for support. He go ahead and Charles in. He's going to fall to Chickens Go Moo. And the Coyotes continuing with this hold. It's going to be tough for the Bearcats here. And all of a sudden, you have to start even thinking about chalking this one soon because it's not looking good on the break. Yeah, usually on a point like Garage, you want to chalk it a little bit early because look at the rotation from P3 to P4. Number four is going to be there, Drewski, who is 10 and 4. He's going to have a big gunfight with number five, Disarray. He's going to win it out too. He'll even look for the next. Cushy's going to drop Boosty, not even going to take the gunfight in time. And that is going to absolutely throw up these spawns for point number four. But big pick from Boosty. This might be a chance for Bearcats to lock something down. The cross map rotations. You had Drewski in the back doing his best. He's going to fall. And now you see on your mini map, the white team will have control of this hill. Can they keep their hold intact as they try to make a comeback in this game? Spark will be the first one up here to make a play. He finds one. He finds two in the back. Don't make it three. Hoyless able to get the trade right before he gets world starred in disarray. Still on the point, doing his best with the finesse, the slides, the jumps, the shots. The oh, third is there with the Diamati. Gets this man off the hill. You can't do it right now as he's still hurt. Going for another child, a gun punch won't happen. And finally, disarray is going to get cleaned off that point. Coyotes will get this 30 seconds if they can keep a hold together. And even with this time gain from the Bearcats, you have 30 seconds still to be had for the Coyotes. And you're already up 126 to 51. The Bearcats just not doing enough to stay in it. I mean, Disarray trying to hold it alive over on courts. That 3K. He was actually on a four spray, but getting cleaned up just once again, not enough in it. Now you have to look at this number five if Hardpoint. You just gain a ton off this pool instantly. You're just dropping four. Go down a sea of red in the kill feed. And USD are looking for this fifth one to lock it down once again. A clean sweep to open up this hill. And now all of a sudden, the Bearcats trying to make a break. I think it really has to happen as a team, though. Some good shots into Spark here. He will fall. You just can't be hitting this as an individual, though. It's got to come all at once. As you see it now, here they come out of Zig. One down. Disarray trying to do what he did on that P4 hill. He's going to find another and another. Disarray absolutely doing his best to keep his team in this one. But you look at the score sheets. It's just 16 and 8 for Drewski, 17 and 8 for Spark. These guys are carrying the load right now. The Bearcats still trying to claw their way back into this one. And, Mo and Boosty, Mr. Bullfrog actually swamped to the 74U. So putting away the questionable gun, taking out the more meta SMG. He's going to be holding his own with a 2K between Drewski and Chickens. And now if you take a look back on this rotation as we do reset the hard points. You take kind of remember the first hold that we did see from USD. And they did actually gain 35 seconds off this mostly hot contested that you usually see on raid first point. But... I mean, coming out on top, USD the first time around, Bearcats, they need to start answering back with some heavy heals here. And this could be a good start because if you remind yourself, too, on that point two switch, I think it was Bearcats with the closest tie between the point one point two marker that we saw. I think a trend here with these taped magazines. We saw it on the Alpha stream tonight. Now we're seeing it here in this matchup. We saw the players talking about it before the game. An interesting thing that maybe we'll see happen more and more across the scene here. So we see some GAs come into place today. A lot of AK-74Us in this match as well. Disarray trying to play for this old time. Putting some shots down. Doing his best with the finesse. But as we know, this 20 seconds is a little less important than the hold for the next hill over by the kitchen. We'll see which team can get the setup in place. And right now it's going to be the Coyotes. So Bearcats forced to try to make a break. Drewski's finding two in the middle of the map. And that'll slow the push for now. Just he's been such a thorn in the side of this team. He's 21 and 10 on a four spree, playing for those streaks, which would be honestly huge. Rotating over to Garage. 
from the front line. The Bearcats are going to break through, put a foot on the hard point, but instantly cleaned up by Drewski. Now on a fry spray, looking to make it more if he gets the six here. Kabazli is seven. Oh. They line up. He puts them down. He's got streaks. The barrage is in his pocket, and he is looking for the hunt now. This is going to be a Bearcats flooding through the middle of the map. University of South Dakota are going to be crossing this 200 point marker and looking to break through this lead with the rest of the 30 points that they can have. But you got to get past Drewski. You just can't do it right now. The eight kill streak, both of his score streaks will be in his back pocket. And Nine the, kills. It's just absolutely insane right now. 26 and 10. Carrying the load for the Coyotes as they make this rotation to Garage. They're going to probably look to end it here. You got the Bearcats grabbing that old time, but the rotations, as you can see, are falling apart as Disarray goes down. Three players already set up in the garage. Streaks will be able to cover the front. I, again, think the Coyotes are going to be looking to end it right here, right now. And the Streaks find nothing, but Drewski, actually, on the last of it, does find it. Still holding on to that front line. Sparky going to help him out now. Cushy with some beams across the garage. Does keep the Bearcats alive here. Franchise the big one-on-one. -on -one. Clears up. Cushy and not able to find the second. The Bearcats still staying alive here, but not really holding on to nothing but a thread as they do finally clear up the Coyotes. Drewski fighting from Garage. Just keeping them back here. 27 seconds. I don't think USD can win off this. I expect Hoyless to kind of come in and contest and maybe hold them to the basketball court. So you might want to see that rotation already there. It is chickens go moo. So there's going to be some big off-screen gunfights. We will see at least one more hill. And you're right, though. This old time still is very, very important. That final eight seconds is going to go to the Coyotes. So all of a sudden, they don't need so much time on this next hill. But as you can see, they're already set up there. Chickens go move is going to fall. Big kill out of Cushy. And again, I talked about those tape mags. Drewski's got him on at 31 and 12. He doesn't have to be out of the fight too much because he's reloading so quickly. The push, though, coming through the backside. Long routes from the Coyotes as they look to end it on this hill. It's going to be a tough spot for Cushy and company as the push comes through the back. Here comes the first player at Spark. He falls. Second is going to go down to one health. And the trades come in from Boosie. Now switching his gun again to the Krig this time. Trying to keep this game alive. It's just 12 seconds needed for the Coyotes. The push remains at the backside. It's like lamps to the slaughter, but imagine a comeback from this it would be insane it would break the mentals of south dakota boosie with the better positioning is gonna win that gunfight expect the more from stairs he looks away at the last second drewski breaks through back on a five three make it six looking to put the nail in the coffin disarray keeping him in it but is the pressure gonna overwhelm him sparky closes out they need seven seconds and they have seven seconds i actually don't think that was enough carry they over. might be able to win it out. Oh, no, it's going to go to a point five, And Drewski wins it out. Coyotes take map one. Wow. Incredible stuff. And, I mean, the Bearcats were really starting to put things together, especially on this P4 hill right here that we're seeing in the kill cam. Spark was finding one, finding two. This might not be the right kill cam. But, yeah, they started to put stuff together there on that basketball hill. You started to think about a comeback. And just when you start to think about it, the Coyotes put the, close the door on that one and win a pretty dominant map one. I think it all has to go to Drewski there. Triple positive on that raid hard point. And this is going to be a little bit kind of, I should say, destructive now for the side of the Bearcats. I mean, you're going into a triple trek of Garrison across three modes. If you force that map four... And Garrison, a very heavily favored SMG map, especially with the XM4 being GA'd now. I have to say, Disarray is going to be just... He's, it's a field day for him now. It's a jungle gym over on Garrison for him right now. Looking at what he did on Raid, I can only see it amplified on a map like Garrison. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And we weren't sure if we were going to see the GAs in place, but they are. So no XM4s are going to be allowed, as we saw in that first map. And I th you think you're right. It only sets up better for the, cert or for the submachine gun players so many little hiding spots and, and routes you can run. But when it comes to search and destroy on Garrison, as we know, it can be pretty gridlocked, right? Could like, be. you need a first blood. You need one of your Krig players to open up some space on the map for you to start to make your push. Because without smokes, without snipers, there's just not a, ho a lot of flank routes available for some of these SMG players uh, off the rip. We'll see what happens if we get to some lower live situations. We did see a match already on Garrison search and destroy here on the Bravo stream a little earlier today. So... I don't know. It definitely isn't my favorite in the in the list for search and destroy. You still have to play it at some point. We'll see which Express. one of the two teams. Right. I would love to see Express as well. That would be a lot of fun. I mean, Garrison, it's it's not that bad, but like Express. Just like it just even that word just has so much to it when you say it.
You're looking at Garrison, though. Nonetheless, is that where we have to play for this map number two in this series? And you're looking at the records for each of them. Once again, the University of South Dakota, they they have the favorable veto here. I mean, they're 2-1 and one on Garrison. When you look at the side of Northwest Missouri, they're 0-1. Oh so, like, I mean, that says, that, that says a lot to the experience that we're going to have here. University of South Dakota, I don't know if they have the more experience vetoing these maps, but I don't know if... Uh, the Bearcats really did their homework into this team. They, they might just be kind of playing into their favor, and that's not really going to be uh, your strong suit moving into a map where Disarray just absolutely bodied you with that 74U. Now he can just do it again on Garrison. Yeah, and the loss was to Ottawa. Ottawa Black, who is, as we know, one of the best teams in the CCL. And I think to give them the benefit of the doubt, again, I just think it's a little bit of an unpredictable map in the way that well, maybe it's more predictable because you can't really employ much strategy. You kind of know it's all right in front of you. So it's really going to come down to the slaying power. And again, I think you're right there. USD did show that a little more in map one. It's difficult one to try to win with strategy, right? Like there's just not yeah. a lot of curve balls you can throw at your opponent. So we'll see if NWMS have anything up their sleeves. Did they do some preparation uh, ahead of this one? With the meta changing a little bit, you're going to have to see some Krigs open things up. I think that's the key for them, right, for the Bearcats. You've got to find some first blood with your assault rifle players to give some more space for the submachine gun players on the map to run free. Uh, that will be the key for them. But as we know, I mean, anything could happen in Search and Destroy. I think that's what makes it so fun to watch. Oh, 100%. And uh, if you're actually kind of like going to want those nitty-gritty stats, both teams are 5-5 five and five in Search and Destroy. So, I mean, you're you're having a good showing on on this game mode especially for Garrison, if you're University of South Dakota, but experience shows and, and, and or numbers don't lie. The numbers like, do not lie. <laughs> the li numbers don't lie. And I mean, yeah, you have the experience on Garrison, but some teams are just search and destroy teams. And that might be the Bearcats. Now, definitely not a good game mode to go into against Ottawa and not a good record. Like you're playing Garrison against Ottawa. You, I mean, you're going to lose. There's not a lot of teams that will take a map off of Ottawa these days. Um, and when it does, it's just absolutely insane to see these Titans battle against each other. But Northwestern, I mean, going into this, I wouldn't beat yourself down over that 0-1 record too, too much. Kind of going in with a fresh slate on here and knowing that you both are even in the search and destroys could really kind of bring your hopes up. And honestly, you can play into this as a, an equalizing game mode. If you take this map off of University of South Dakota, they might not be expecting it. And it honestly might put a dampen on their game three for that control. So this is a big game for Northwestern Missouri to win if they do take it they could keep the momentum going into the control. Right, and you talk about how some teams just aren't really search and destroy teams. A lot of them are. I mean, you, you think about how this game mode has really been there since the start of Call of Duty yeah. in general, and we looked at Drewski in map one as kind of the carrying the load for the Coyotes. He's got that 2.35 search and destroy KD, so you probably expect him to have another big one. We talked about the SMGs probably being an important role on Garrison. I don't know. It feels like a lot of these players come in with the search and destroy mentality coming from the amateur scene. That's where a lot of the tournaments and competitive play is. So most players in the CCL should have that search and destroy mentality. See which team uh, practices it and is, is more comfortable with it here as we jump into Garrison uh, for map two. Now, like I said in the opening, I hope you guys like tanks. Strap in. We got a lot of Garrison in front of us. We If University of South Dakota dropped this map, we're guaranteed three Garrisons in a row. And it could be worse. I hope you be. like Garrison. I hope you like green. It feels like a very green map. It does. It, honestly, it does. I'm expecting a lot of B hits here. I mean, you don't usually see the A site get kind of work too much on the attacking side as it is tougher to kind of break through the control room out into radar. So I'm looking at the attackers to really take control of top tank, you know, kind of work their magic onto the bridge, make sure that events is cleared. And then get that bomb down on B. So we already hopping on with the Bearcats. Boosty taking a gunfight through Radar. That is going to be a tough one for him to try to win. He is still alive up there. And First Blood's traded back and forth between the two squads. And there you go. You see it. That is not an easy one to come out on top of. Chickens will find the kill onto uh, Boosty up top there. All of a sudden, 2v2 situation. Bomb is down by B, but you got two players over at A. This might be your chance to lay it, and they're going to go ahead and take advantage of it. Cushy on the bomb, trying to get the plant. Some information on him, though, as he gets hit with the nade. Able to get away with his life. Here comes the retake from the Coyotes. 
Teammate going to fall all on Drewski here. He's got the drop on Hoyles. He finds Ooh. one. He knows the second player is in the vent. Can he pick up the kills? And is Cushy going to be ready for it here? He's got him behind him. He just turned at the wrong time. But now coming around to the other side, it's just a cat and mouse game here. He knows Cushy is in the vent. Doing his best to try to play the mind games is Drewski. Now going to take his opportunity to drop in from behind. Did he pick up on the sound cue? He did. But it doesn't matter. Drewski is going to win the gunfight and get the defuse. Clutch plays out of him. Already starting off 3-0 and after that hot uh, map one. And who else do you want in a clutch position other than Drewski? I mean, I couldn't name a better player for University of South Dakota to have in that situation. And he really works his magic. I mean, he takes his time. He doesn't pressure vents too early. Kind of plays the mind game. Makes Cushy think, which side are you going to come from, front or back? And honestly, Cushy did read that first, but Drewski... He is just shooting a little bit quicker tonight. Gets the defuse. University of South Dakota take first round in this search and destroy. And not horrible from the Bearcats. They just have to finish rounds like that. Right. I think you you nailed it on the head. Like, if there's anybody you can have in a clutch situation, it's going to be Drewski right now. And he did everything right there, taking his time to pick up the win. Saw the first bloods kind of go back and forth in that round. It kind of left things pretty open in the air. You can see how it was a little two-sided there. I don't think the uh, the defense was necessarily expecting that as we get into round two and you got Boosty holding down top green. He's probably not going to see anybody up there because it's such a difficult push. But Park Spark says, hold on, I might think about it. But for this time being, it's just a stalemate across the map. Boosty actually swaps to the Craig six. Might know that power angle here. Unfortunate timing actually unscopes. So Sparky gets away without taking any damage, but they know that, that green's occupied. Take a look at the defense. Heavy brick control for the side of Bearcats. Maybe playing the B retake as Hoyless, who's playing back tank, even rotates to, to kind of confirm that they can lock down this A site. But he's going to have to crossfire for bridge. He's waiting for this attack to come through, and Coyote is just, once again, playing the mind game. You just know that drawing first blood is so key here. You can see that neither team willing to overextend, but it's going to be the offense who has to make the first move here soon. 30 seconds left. First blood going to go in favor of the defense. Now, all of a sudden, a 3v4. You got to try to get one back here. If you're the offense, go ahead and leave green. Start to make your push to B, but just wait a second because Hoyless is ready for oh. it. He finds two. Chickens is going to find him. And now all up to chickens go moo in a 1v3. Can he make the chickens go moo? He cannot. He falls as well. Good job by the defense there. Playing the patient game, playing the waiting game, not getting too anxious and overextending. You can see it here. This was the play of the round. Hoyless picking up two on the push. Just patient stuff, as, as you have to do on defense. Let's just say, a day ago, you would have the XM4. You challenge that, you probably get the kill. But Craig Six just, wow, that's such a good gun to have in that position. Hoyless comes out with three, shuts down it right away. And Drewski actually getting first blooded. You know, you say that he's in the perfect position to to kind of make those clutch moments happen. Well, uh, on the other side, Bearcats getting that first blood onto Drusi. That is a huge pick, taking him out. Now, a quick hit to the B site. We're going to take over control pretty, pretty swiftly. You're right. Just as quickly as you could have him in a clutch situation, if you get him to die first, that's going to help just as much. As again here, we got the cat and mouse game up top by green. Neither player going to be willing to make the first challenge spark is in an interesting position here could be thinking about climbing up from behind that's the one way you can make a flank happen on this map it's a risky one because again here both teams not willing to overextend not willing to give up first blood and it might be spark here who makes the first play patient though very very oh, patient, patient. boosty makes his position known in control room chickens on the other side and cushy actually doesn't check sparky down there so sparky's still in the back line still can make this happen and so he does he pops out time for his mission to begin hoyless first one down they do check him playing his life this is brilliant you do have the trade off screen but you're forcing this gunfight in the back cushy has to dedicate himself with that and coyote's down by one now bomb's gonna get planted sparky made a big play but not enough just yet. Franchise trying to take out Disarray. He's going to take the challenge in L, and Bearcats close out on their second round. Huge win out of the Bearcats, and it's Cushy picking up Spark in the back. I mean, we watched him there. I, to me, he has to get two kills in that situation. You're behind the entire enemy team. No one's looking at you. You kind of have time to pick and choose your fights. He does find the one, but he was unable to get the second onto Cushy, who retreats, picks up the guy in enemy lines. And it gives the uh, life advantage to the Bearcats. They're able to take advantage of it, pick up the round. It really felt like one that they were going to lose. And then all of a sudden, Spark only able to find one on the back end. Leaves an opening for the offense there. And that's a big win all of a sudden. 2-1.
you're able to find yourself a win on offense, that makes things a lot more easy. You can just go ahead and win the rest of your defenses. You're in a good spot. Bearcats still sitting inside brick disarray. QBZ. XM4 is out. Maybe the QBZ is in. The knockoff Spark. XM4. Exactly. Sparky finding first blood on a Hoy list, a player who stood out last time on defense for Bearcats with a 3K. And now the first line of defense for Bearcats out of play. And that might just be a go ahead to plant on the B site. This is huge, yeah, to find first blood on offense. Now you really have a lot, but Spark, you have the bomb in hand. Be careful. Oh. He's going to go ahead and chow out into square, and he drops it in a very difficult spot for his team. You got Boosty continuing to hold things down over here by Greenside. All of a sudden, this one just turned back the other way at 180-degree turn after first blood for the offense. Now bombed down by square. Oh, QBZ time. QBZ for Disarray, seeing if he can't make the new meta gun happen. He throws out some shots, unable to find anything. Chickens go, Moo will find another, but you still have Bomb down by square. I don't think they know Bomb is down, though. Like, yeah, Sparky Sparky was spotted. He was killed, but I don't know if they understood that the Bomb does down, go down. Boosty does hit that flank, finds a pick, so equalizes. Bomb's going down on the B site. Disarray with Boosty on a pinch. But a crossfire for Chickens and Franchise. Franchise playing in vents. Chickens over on Brick. He's going to be watching this cross. Actually, it's a bad timing, and it's Chickens who finally spots him, but they both know each other's there. Boosie's going to clean up. They should know this last player's invent after they check the angles. 26 seconds to work it. And you need 7.5 to hit that. They're going to be pinching. Disarray cleans it up. X or QBZ for the win. And the, dis the defuse is going to come out. A 3-1 lead for the Bearcats. Didn't really get to see it in an intense gunfight, but yeah, able to find one with the QBZ, and it is it's probably the next in line, right? I mean, you look at the XM4 going out the window. Something else is going to have to come in and fill that flex roll. See Disarray using it there. Now 3-1 for the Bearcats. I mentioned it. Winning an offense on Garrison Search and Destroy is really going to put you in a good spot. They're able to do it there a couple rounds ago. Now they extend the lead on defense to 3-1. If you can win this offense, you're really like, you should not be losing the game at that point. This is a huge defense, though, for the Coyotes to keep this one where it's at. I haven't seen an A hit yet. We've seen a couple teases, but they don't want to commit to it. And Chicken's going back to his position. Boosie looking to uh, hold that uh, that rule one just outside of the position, not taking the gunfight, just kind of teasing each other with the shots. And maybe returning to the B side, just right. Maybe think about cleaning out vents. Interesting to see where Bearcats take this as a very split attack and Sparky playing aggressive in vents on defense. I'd love to see the A hit, Seymour. It's just so tough to get out of top green there. As again, later and later we go into this round with neither team able to draw for his blood. Boosty did take some shots, but he's doing a pretty good job here playing this low game. He could have had a chance on chickens there. It's just, you just see it though. Neither team willing to overcommit. And it's really a testament to their patience. They're doing a really good job because you just know that if you get first blooded, you're going to be in a difficult spot. We get the overview here as Hoyless starting to make the push across the stat. He's going to get taken down by Drewski in a big spot. Drewski moves to four and three. Cushy there to find the trade. So now we go to a 3v3 as another falls. It becomes a 3v2. Off screen. It's even. Disarray is going to drop this bomb. Drewski spots him, sees the foot, finds the kill. Now Drewski should be expecting to drop, but Booski gets the better of him. Six seconds left. You can't get the plant. You got to play for the kill. And they are on completely different ends of the spectrum. They're not even oh. going to get to take the gunfight. Coyotes from the time are going to take it. And honestly, a few more seconds and maybe, yeah. just maybe you would have had that gunfight for Booski, but just not enough time at the end of it. You have to think that maybe wasting a little bit too much time worrying about that player on radar, not really executing on your strategy in the in the given seconds. And you got to give it to Drewski in that sense. I mean, Hoyless goes for the challenge, but Drewski was playing in the position Hoyless was playing all the way back in round number two and finds that first blood. It was really big for stalling out that attack. I think you're right. And Search and Destroy is the adjustment game mode, right? And I think for the offense next time, for the Bearcats, don't even send a player top green. Sure, they're holding it on defenses. Here comes the push to A we were oh. waiting for. Boosty to 1v4. He's got a full team in front of him. He's going to fall. And now the callouts do come in. So the entire defense is going to rotate over. They're able to find some kills. Disarray trying to find the last one in a 1v1 situation. They're both 
are <laughs> holding these angles on each other so close. They just don't realize it. They don't have the, the x-ray vision that we do. Is finally, here comes the challenge. The eyes are going to be laid on. The shots come through, and it's Drewski coming out on top. So the hit to A technically comes out successful. Well, it's something that I was actually, I've been meaning to highlight. Is a player like Drewski with his kind of breakout and kind of snapping compatibility, you know, he might you might want to jump this A site at some point, change it up. Now, every single round we've been seeing a very heavy uh, defensive side for Bearcats playing towards breaks, but, I mean, Coyote's overwhelming that player on radar, holding those positions and playing for trades. That You know, after you just overwhelm that player, you play for trades, and it's just that 4-on-3 is going to favor the Coyotes every single time. They equalize this game. It's 3-3, three to three, and they're on defense to maybe hopefully connect an attack and a defense round and take the lead. Got to give him credit. You don't see that a lot, the push to A, and it works out for him. They're able to tie this one up. We mentioned how the off the first offensive round one went to the Bearcats. Now the Coyotes are able to get one on the board. We've got ourselves a ball game as we go back to the other side. The defense is going to draw first blood this time, and Spark's going to get away into the vent. We still have this 1v1 by Top Green. Disarray able to even things up at three apiece for now, but Spark is thinking about making something happen from the back side. Disarray's not ready for it. He goes down as well. Boosty was able to find the kill top three. He's last alive. A player falls down to bottom. One on one. Ourselves a one v one. They're gonna lay eyes on each other. Here comes the challenge, and Boosty is just barely going to fall. These rounds keep coming down to these one v one situations. It's so intense, but that time the Coyotes are able to pull it out on defense. You know, once again, Boosty putting himself in such a good position. You know, making that drop from Green all the way to Bricks, winning this gunfight huge. Gave him the opportunity for that one-on-one. -on -one. I actually almost got the 3K to clutch the round, but came up a little bit short, and that is going to give University of South Dakota the lead in this search and destroy. Now, I really have to give it to Sparky there. That aggressive play on Platt was everything. Getting that first blood, getting out into vents, and it, because they challenged him back on Platt, and that just fed into Drewski, who's playing all the way back scaffolding, and that AR ripped him apart, gave the player advantage, and allowed Spark to hit that flank through vents and find even more... Now they're back on attack. They're not going to flood through the A site. Instead, it's going to be a default floating tank and a lot of plat control. Yep, they go back to square one here. They, again, win this offense, and you basically have this thing all but done for. The Coyotes try to make this one round away from a victory here. They'd go up 2-0 in the series. But again, it's a stalemate here on Garrison at the start of this round. Neither team trying to be the first one to make the move. Chickens is going to find the kill onto Hoyless using Spark as bait. Now the nade comes through, not going to connect. If you're the offense, you really got to take advantage of this life disparity here. As you got a player maybe thinking about making a play through vent backside. Boosty, nobody's home top green, and the bomb's going down. B, 4v2, up to Cushy and Boosty here to clutch up. And Coyote's really coming around in the second half. Bombs down, 4v2. Not optimal for the Bearcats. It looks like setting up for a pinch too, but Drewski watching from floating tank is going to take Boosty out in control room. All up to Cushy. He has Jump the Diamante in hand. He's going, oh, Ninja. Oh, they're checking <laughs> it. There's, there's no way. There's absolutely no way, but I can respect it. Got to respect it. Standing tall there on the bomb. But how about this round from the offense? So rare that you see a clean 4-0 sweep win. It was Chickens Go Mew using his teammate as a little bit of bait there. It works out. Now you've got yourself in a closeout round. You're on defense. It's looking pretty good for the Coyotes. If you're the Bearcats, got to draw on what worked very early in this game where they were able to get that first offensive round win. But, I mean, it's not going to be easy here. You have to expect the Coyotes to just sit on back, play really, really slow in this one, and let the fight come to them. They're not sitting back. Yeah, they are not. Never mind. They're pushing through green. Sparky and Vents, a full flood for both teams, and Disarray comes out with two, but... Even it out, the trades are favoring the Bearcats. A one-on-one -on -one once more, but Boosty takes wow. it this time. And he's not going to drop it again. Bearcats, they stay alive on Garrison Search and Destroy. And they bring it one round away from making it a round 11 game. But you see how if they did sit back, it might have worked out a little better because the offense was running right at them. It's going to work out in favor of the Bearcats this time. A couple players top green are unable to slow down the push. Boosty coming up in another big spot in a 1v1 there extending this game for his squad now though is when it really gets tough for the coyotes because i don't know i mean i guess they probably have the kill advantage but if you win this defense and you're the bearcats you might have another defense coming up so i feel like the coyotes really needed to win that in the last round they might have put themselves in a tough spot here still though close out round defense has to get it done if we want to see round 11. Uh, not too often that you both just decide you're gonna run it down mid <laughs> 
but Bearcats, they're in a good position now because of it. Sparky waiting through the middle of the map, bomb in hand, Disarray watching the cross, but the opposite corner to where Sparky is, Drewski and Franchise set up on bridge and platform. Disarray still unchecked, but the nade should give away the position. Actually doesn't catch him, so Sparky might take this gunfight. He's going to force Hoyless into a bad position and force the B-Site to be given up here, but kind of surrounding them like sharks, Bearcats. Just waiting and trying to pull a first blood, trying to force Coyotes on the disadvantage. My guy, Spark, does not care. Fearless taking on these challenges with the SMG, and he's going to find first blood onto Disarray. Teammate there to find number two is Franchise. This thing starts to open up for the offense, and they could put it away oh, here boosty. again onto Boosty and Cushy in the 2v4. Oh, there's a player floating tank, though. This is going to be so hard. Chicken's watching that. Chicken closes it out. Cushy to stay alive here. Cushy to force that round 11. Cushy to do it all. Sp spots out Drewski. Gets in behind. Tags him up, but doesn't finish the kill. Rotates around. Bricks makes it a one on three. Now he is going to rotate all the way through control room. Try to take control of bridge and then have the favorable positions. But Chicken's not going to let him do that. He's laying prone. He's waiting in wake. And Coyotes, they go up 2-0. They made it interesting there in the end, and they wanted to make it tough on themselves and win it by taking an offense at the end. Spark there with the huge first blood was making plays all game, getting behind. I mentioned how the flank routes aren't necessarily there for, on Garrison, but Spark was finding them. Coyotes will take the lead 2-0 all of a sudden, and we mentioned it. We hope you like tanks because we headed back to Garrison for map three, but I really think that was a lot of fun to watch it just the way those two teams were counteracting each other and the the reaction plays the adjustments that we saw i mean the coyotes had a chance to win it there in 6-3 fashion but rather they just decide to full out push on defense costs them they are able to hang on and win it there with the final offense so just a good showing from both squads made it interesting for us which we can always appreciate now we'll have to see what happens as we go back to garrison for map three now i have to say bert you know x and four not being in play garrison wasn't that Back. He's a lot more methodical You're right. than just kind of ego chelling with that assault rifle. But like at the same time, you know, I still miss the XM4 being in there and the versatility to it. Garrison wasn't that bad to play here. I think it was a good map choice given the GA situation. And, you know, coming into it, the Bearcats really fought back into that. And honestly, I'm not disappointed in what I saw out of Northwest Missouri State. I, I think that they double back. They just keep up this momentum. There's a chance they can take this control, force a hard point. I mean, they showed up in that that hard point for raid a little bit too late to the party, but nonetheless, they showed up at the end of it, and they they should know that. I mean, this this University of South Dakota roster they, it bleeds. They're, they 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 have some mortality showing, but Ab absolutely something to take away from it. But I, I wonder if maybe this is our opportunity to talk about the GA and the changes. I think we're actually on different sides here, and. I personally think it's a good move. Take the XM4 out. I think it was just a little too overpowered up close. But what you just said really, I think, supports that argument where I, that game, that map was a lot more fun to watch because the Krig, you have to think a little more. You can't take some of those up-close gunfights. It forces your SMG players to fill in those spots. I don't know. It just it felt like it made things a little more fun to watch because you didn't have a bunch of M4s taking crazy challenges and winning. <laughs> But I know I, I can see it from your side, too, where the XM4 was a lot of fun to watch, especially in the hands of some of these top tier assault rifle and flex players. It, you can look at it two different ways. I think overall, for me, it just makes things a little more even and fun to watch. The XM4 was, was, uh, it was a highlight weapon. <laughs> it was literally sure. a walking highlight reel. Uh, you take it out, you got the Krig and S74U matchup and definitely a lot slower of a game. A lot more paced on a 4v4 level. I think having the XM4 on there again, it gave it the, the Modern Warfare vibes. You could take those crazy chows with the, the XM4. You know, you know that M4 was just destructive back on Modern Warfare. But Cold War, I mean, kind of taking it out, the slower play fits the game a lot more. You know, smaller maps, shorter play, and slower play kind of, it favors it. And Garrison wasn't as bad as I remember it. <laughs> Yeah, and I will say, I don't think the story ends here because I do feel like something has to come in to fill that flex role. We saw the QBZ come out in that garrison search and destroy. The FFAR was yeah. every player on the map was using that at the start of the game because that was ridiculously overpowered. Sure, it got a, a, a nerf, and maybe we'll see that come back into play. I always am so interested to see how the meta changes with these GAs and whether you like them or not. I think sometimes they are, are, are needed, and it felt like the M4 was just a little too strong up close. I mean, who knows? Maybe they nerfed the M4 and it comes back. That's a good question, too. It was all the M4. Call of Duty. All of oh, Call of Duty. Ever? Favorite gun. Yeah, ever. Ooh.
That's a tough one. Maybe the UMP from Modern Warfare okay. 2, the suppressor, like getting a nuke with that gun was just like you can't match those feelings. That's probably one up there. I think the MSR from MW3, the sniper rifle, I like that one a lot. Free patch what about, ASM1. What about you? Free patch oh. ASM1. Yeah, that's a good one. But it has to be that variation of it, right? That you pull out of the pack or whatever. What yeah. was it? The easy? No, 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 no. It's the normal one. It's just so fun. I, I, you know what? I actually, the ASM1 and Bal, I was, a, I was an anchor kind of flex player back when I played in a amateur advanced warfare. And the Bal was just, was just the sound pack that it had. Same with the a a ASM1. They just yeah. moved so smooth. They shot so smooth. I just, I, I'm, I love that those, those two guns. They're probably my favorite guns in Call of Duty. Bal and ASM1. You talk about balancing. That game did a really good job because the bow sped up as you started to shoot. Like that was perfect for up close. You weren't going to win your yeah. gunfights with the assault rifle. Like that, they had that all in check. I will say as well, we're on the topic of guns. It's exciting to see the AK-74U in the mix and not an MP5 again this year. Like we had the love M4. It. Let's get that out. Like the Krig, okay. Like like I like variety. Exactly. Is what I'm trying to get at and, and diversity. And I think the 74U is a nice change of pace this year. Now we're hopping back into garrison control as we do kind of swap back to the series. Segue away podcast. from our guns. The hundred percent. Yeah, let's get the <laughs> let's get it going. And we're gonna we're gonna swap back into the tank ars arsenal of garrison for this control matchup. And I have to be a little bit kind of one sided on this map for control. A lot different than search and destroy it's going to be heavily defensive favorite. So I need to see, especially with the slow play, especially with the XM4 not being here, I need to see some something slow, methodical, and very safe from these attacking teams. Right. With the slaying power we've seen so far from the Coyotes, the, the South Dakota Coyotes, they've just had it in their favor. So I think if you're the Bearcats right now, you're going to have to really monotonously win this game. It's going to have to be brick by brick that you build this house because you're probably going to get spawn trapped at some point. Will you, able to, will you be able to have the composure to get out of that spawn trap and keep the round going? We'll see what happens here as we jump right into things. Boosie opens up first blood on the map. Drewski out of play. Coyote starting on this attack here. Already, look at the aggression from number five on your mini map. Who is that? That is Boosty. Pushing all the way point three hard point. Getting in behind. Shuts down the push onto B. Just running amok in this back line. Drewski's going to go down two. Bearcats absolutely coming alive right now in the start of this control. They are up five lives. And Boosty is not stopping there. He is on a four spree. And he's already, he hasn't died yet. He's playing for streaks. This is perfect. And he's not biting off more than he can chew. Picking up one kill at a time, realizing that as long as he stays alive, there's something for the Coyotes to think about as he finds another. Now he's oh. going to grab two in a row, make it six. As he's starting to think about playing for these streaks. And all of a sudden, our predictions are out the window. 27 to 17 in this first round. The spawn oh, trap boosty. is being thrown on the Coyotes. And Boosty does fall in the end. As you know, the defense, definitely the more favored side, and the Bearcats showing that there in round one. They dominated that one from the get-go. That was all boosty. All Absolutely. boosty here in the back line. There's some key gunfights happening from Cushy on the A site, but this this clear, this wipe, and the heavy aggression that he was showing into the spawns just took so much time off of the feed. I think this was really key as well. The fact that he was able to bite off that kill. Slowed down this attack even longer. Wasted so much more time. I wish he played for the streaks, but got a little bit overzealous. He dies, loses it. Was one away from the artillery, and he doesn't grab it, as you see on the top of the screen. Bearcats lead 1-0. Let's see what they can do on attack. This is, yeah, this is where we really get to see what they're made of as they switch to the attacking side. So much more difficult here on Garrison. A lot more of a longer run here. And we'll see if the Coyotes can revert what was a tough start to this one. First blood in favor of Drewski. We saw what he did in the first respawn, trying to pick things up where he left off. Just getting into the point. Cushy, don't even wow. try. He's going to fall as well. There's starting to be some map control here for the defense. And he trades. Drewski trades. comes out with two. Boosty feeding off the back. Franchise takes a gunfight. First of the game for Franchise. They didn't have a great search and destroy. They came out with the win, but Franchise was 2-8 and eight at the end of that search, so... Not really the best. Plenty of time gained on the B site. Just right, keeping it alive. They got two takes of progression and Chicken with a big one-on-one -on -one to slow it down. Chicken off the goose egg finally now too. He started with zero kills in that first round. He's in an important spot here at B to slow down this push. This is the one that the Bearcats will want to get first. You can see the lives are pretty close here and there's a couple players in front of Chickens here. 
Playing his life so well, though. Not taking the challenges. Finally, a player comes through. It's Disarray. He finds him. He's got support from Drewski. Huge stuff here defending B out of the Coyotes. You can see it, though. The focus continues to be there for the Bearcats. They know they have to get this point first. The clock is stopped, even on the lives. Two takes on the B side. Disarray getting aggressive. Has two players on the other side here. Takes the fight to Chicken. Takes it. Second player's up to the bat. Drewski. He is going to get two picks, but still progression being gained. It's Sparky with a big flank now. See what you can bite off with this on a two streak. Make it three. Gonna rotate all the way around exactly how Boosty played it. Team kill. Boosty's gonna take advantage of that now. So it looks like Sparky and Boosty just setting up camp in the enemy back lines and really doing it all for their teams. Absolutely. A couple, a couple of the dirty working players here having a lot of fun on garrison control. This might be the opportunity finally for the Bearcats to grab B. And all of a sudden... They've got themselves in a pretty decent spot. They got the life advantage. Now you just have to worry about, hey, you got time to do that. The long routes might come in key here if they decide to play through the back. They are going to. Hoyless with the QBZ. He's going to fall from behind. Chickens with a big angle there to get that kill. Still holding things down at A. And I think if you're the Bearcats, got time to have a conversation here. How do we want to make this happen? Oh, this is going to be tough. I mean, A is definitely the harder of the two to cap. And exactly. especially when you only have to focus on the one, University of South Dakota will be cracking down on this, doubling back and really setting up a solid defense. Like you said, brick by brick, going to be building this up to knock down these Bearcats. And it really it comes off to these big kills that you're getting on these flex players. You're just, they're overextending. They're finding maybe a one for one, and that's slowing down the Bearcats even longer. And I think to me, I mean, you see Drewski in an important spot here holding this down. If I'm the other side, I'm not even thinking about hitting through top green. Let's hit the long routes. It's the only way you're going to make it happen. You see it now starting to happen here from Hoyless. At the backside, needs to find a kill. He's got a disarray founding one. Bark, though, able to sneak by again here. We saw it in the search and destroy. Okay, not too fast. He's going to fall. Still, though, you haven't seen much control go in favor of either team. Cushy's in an important spot on the backside here to make something happen. Only one player to deal with on the point is Chickens. No respawns remaining. It's 6v3. Oh, Cushy. Cushy shoots his gun, and that's going to cost him his life. No respawns. Drewski gets bodied, though. Holy. Now, no respawns for Coyotes either. 2v4. Now, it's all search and destroy here. 1v4 clutch. Disarray playing for that ace. Seven seconds to do so. I think he's, he's just playing, playing his, kills. Yeah, he's yeah. playing his life. He's on a two streak. You know, it'll carry over into the next round. He doesn't want to give up too much to the other team. You know, doesn't want to give up a score streak either, just in case. So and I, a good. I think that's actually really, really smart because of I how strong the Bearcats were in that first defensive round. They might be thinking about if this. I mean, they should be thinking about if this goes to round five. You want to have less deaths, more kills than your opponent, so you can get defense in round five. And that one kill, who knows? Maybe it does play a big role in the end. So smart play. That time from the Bearcats to, to just give up, to concede that round. They really did a good job on that offense to make it close. You don't really usually see it go that far. But now they trade defenses. And we'll see which team can continue with the life advantage. It's it's definitely heavily in favor of the Bearcats. You got oh, 4 yeah. and 12 and 4 and 9 uh, for a couple players in the Coyotes that are kind of costing them right now. Yeah, well, 100% I was going to point that out if you didn't. Two players on four kills definitely means Bearcats. If it goes a the distance, huh, they're going to have that math. defending round. <laughs> but I can not tell that at, much. Yeah. <laughs> It's, not, it's a caster thing. You don't do math, but that speaks stories right here. Hoyless yeah. goes down first blood. Cushy waiting for this push through A. Sparky's the first up to the bat. Franchise the next one. They're going to feed into the lamb slaughter. That is Cushy IV. Cherusky finally breaks on through. They're going to be gaining the contention on A. And this is big for Coyotes. If they can gain a couple ticks of progression on A, kind of pull the defense over to this A side, then they might be able to open up the B site if they do get full-blooded. You can see how worried about it the Bearcats are. They're sending three players to try to get this break. One kill comes through. Disarray finds another, but Franchise is oh. in behind. And he's turning up. He got two kills on the backside. A is going to be in a good spot here. Again, though, the Bearcats trying to flood, flood on through. Will they have time to get there? One player in for the contest. It's not going to matter. Franchise is still going. And Oh, it's going to be close. Okay, they do get the point there in the final seconds. That's huge here. You get the more difficult of the two. You still have a lot of time to work with. And you look at the lives, 24 to 19. That was game-breaking for Franchise. I mean, he was 4 and 12 pushing into this. Yeah. Now 12 and 14 coming alive and taking charge. You're going to get that one ticket pressure at A. Minute 52 seconds. Plenty of lives in your favor for USD. And Franchise not letting go of this stranglehold. They're getting so much progression on B. You see the slide from Franchise? He is just ego challenging us. He's feeling himself. He's so comfortable, and he is not giving up. Coyotes with a 
dominant round on attack as they take this two to one. Bearcats, they're sweating. Franchise must have drank some G Fuel in between rounds. We're seeing it in the kill cam in behind. He had a couple players not ready for it. He finds them both there in a huge spot. And I really think this is the key on this offensive win. Like you push A first, it, it really causes a lot of chaos for the Bearcats. You could tell they were discombobulated. They didn't know what to do. They're flooding in and it's just going to make the kills even easier if you're just holding down that sprint button. So I think that's a huge win for the Coyotes. Again, we talk about how winning offense is more difficult. Now they've got it done. They could close it out here on defense. Well, we both just pointed out franchise and chickens. You know, they both had four kills at the end of that last game round. Yep. All right. Now it's 14 and 14. Franchise evens it up. Chickens go move eight and 11, picking it up as well. Now, all of a sudden, if Bearcats wins this, they're going to be on the offense for game number five. So they're going to have to win two offenses in a row. That is going to be difficult. In the back line, Jaruski hits that flank, finds two. Absolutely putting a pin in the Bearcats setup. And now looking to set up for the spawn trap. Boosting Hoyless, luckily. They are breaking through and they're making sure that can't happen. These teams like to be pests and just play for these spawn kills. I would not want to be playing against him. Boosty, it doesn't matter that he was in good positioning. He falls to franchise, who, as we know, is turning up right now. Back to 15 and 15, 12 objective kills. On the backside, it's Spark again, getting in behind enemy lines, finding a kill. Franchise finds another. The defense is going to maintain this hold. Neither point with any progression. 50 seconds left. Lives continuing to go in favor of the Coyotes. It's not looking good for the Bearcats here in desperation mode down the stretch. Sparky. Not, not in the back line, but still being a pest. Oh. Boosty as well. That's five kills for Sparky in a row. Playing for even more streaks now. I love this positioning. Setting up on top plat. Hoyless is going to be right around the corner. I don't even think they're going to check Sparky, so he might be just able to pop up like a groundhog, find a few kills, and just add to this streak that he has. 20 seconds for the Bearcats to find something. 17 lives to 22 lives. The Bearcats reaching for straws. The Bearcats, I'm like, what is, is this Spark Kid using a tactical insert? How is he behind us every time we spawn up as he stays in deep here, holding them in their spawn. The push starting to come through at A. Two ticks already have been quietly acquired here. Chicken's in a big spot to get this kill onto Boosty before reinforcements arrive. He is able to do it. And that should be enough for this defensive win here. Spark still out in the spawn. Finally going to get killed by Cushy. And I'm surprised you don't put some body shots down because that must be frustrating to keep getting killed by Spark. The final push here is going to come through. Eight seconds left, and they're able to get the tick started. They got to get these kills. Streaks now for Spark. Should be the icing on the cake. You still have Boosty to deal with, though. Mm, Boosty stopping the clock. This is so important now. Even coming out with a few kills, but Spark still with an arsenal of score streaks to go with. Is going to kind of put the nail down. Coyotes 3-0 for the night. Very dominant last two rounds in that control. And you got to give it to Franchise and Sparky. Mostly Franchise, though. I got to say, he turned up when they needed him. Absolutely. He was 4-12 and 12 at the start of that one round. He finished at 14-14, and 14. so let's see about our bad math here. That's 10-2 and two in that round alone where, yeah, really just flipped the switch, came in crucial for the Coyotes. You pick up that win on offense, and that's about all you need in garrison control. As we know, defense is so, so easy to win. They keep the momentum alive there in that final round. They close it out after the Bearcats uh, had a pretty commanding first round win. They do lose it in 3-1 to one fashion, and the series overall 3-0. Still a good showing from the Bearcats. I think, I mean, you have a lot to take away from that. You do good in the search and destroy. The hard point doesn't go your way. I don't know. The, the, the Coyotes just turned up there down the stretch in that map three. I have to say, you know, that just that push through the, for the A site broke yes. the mental of the Bearcats. And uh, maybe you just, you got to prepare a little bit better for that. I mean, you definitely will heavily set up for a defensive stance on that A side of the map, but you, you have to understand that when that pressure comes, you have to lock it down when you have that set up. And they just broke so easily that you just got to go back to the drawing board, you know, play it out, you know, watch over the VODs and come back a little bit stronger. The Bearcats, I wouldn't be too down on yourselves for that one. I mean, on paper, I mean, six and three for the side of South Dakota. Now seven and three on the map with a perfect 3-0 on the night. It's a tough team to go against. And the Bearcats, you know, you just come back swinging in the second split. It's a whole new vibe now. I want to see them kind of work their magic and bring themselves back up in the CCL for the second split. Split two. It's when it really starts to heat up without a doubt. Everybody's got to kind of get back to the practice, get back to the drawing board, figure themselves out and get ready because 
all of a sudden these games start to matter more and more here but it was a good showing absolutely and again great to be back on the desk with you see more i look forward to more opportunities in the future a hundred percent kag and mick they're gonna be right back up to the casting booth for your next matchup the final matchup of the bravo stream it looks like it's gonna be grossmont community college versus california state university of long beach so stay tuned the college cod bravo stream will be right back we just gotta run a few breaks so don't go anywhere get some snacks hydrate college cod we'll be back <laughs>